How does the derivative affect the shape of a graph? f prime of x tells us about the slope of f of x. So if the graph has slope 0, that means that the tangent line at that point would be horizontal. And in this graph, we see that there are two places where that happens. Well, slope also tells us whether a graph is increasing or decreasing. So right here, we see that our graph would have a positive slope, so that would mean its derivative is positive. And if we look right here, we see our graph is decreasing, which would mean that our derivative would have to be negative. So combining those two things together, we get the following. that a graph <coughs> is, if f prime of x is bigger than 0 for all x in a, b, then f of x is increasing on a, b. And similarly, if f prime of x is less than 0 for all x in a, b, then f of x is decreasing on a, b. So in our first example, we want to find the intervals of increasing or decreasing for f of x equals 3x to the fourth plus 8x cubed minus 48x squared plus 10. So the first thing we need to do is find the critical numbers of this. So to find the critical numbers, we're going to find f prime of x so using the power rule, we get that f prime of x is equal to 12x cubed plus 24x squared minus 96x, and the derivative of 10 is 0. So then step two is we want to find the zeros or the critical numbers. So find the zeros. of f prime of x, which is the critical numbers. So we set f prime of x equal to 0. That gives us 12x cubed plus 24x squared minus 96x is equal to 0. We factor out our GCF, and in this case, that's 12x. And that leaves behind x squared plus 2x take away 8 is equal to 0. And factoring, we get x plus 4 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. So then the critical numbers... are x equals 0, x equals negative 4, and x is equal to positive 2. So now, the next thing we need to do to find our intervals of increasing and decreasing is to make a sign chart. So we're going to make a number line, and then we are going to put all of our critical numbers on the number line. So we have negative 4, we have 0, and then we have 2. So these three critical numbers divide the number line into four distinct parts. And we need to check an x value in each of these sections in f prime. So we have our f prime right here, so let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. We have 12x cubed plus 24x squared minus 96x. 
Now we go back here and we need to check some numbers in each of these regions. So if we go alpha trace, grab y1, if we put in negative 5, we get negative 420. So that's going to be negative. And we could check our next region. So let's pick negative 1, because that's in between negative 4 and 0. We get positive 108, so this is positive. We check something between 0 and 2, so I'll pick 1, and we get negative 60. And then finally we pick something bigger than 2, so I'll just pick 3, and we get positive again. So then our graph is going to be increasing, or our function is increasing, anywhere its derivative is positive. So we're going to be increasing here and here. So from negative 4 to 0, union with 2 to positive infinity. And then our graph is going to be decreasing anywhere our derivative is negative, so that's going to be here and here. So we're going to go from negative infinity to negative 4, unioned with 0 to 2. Alright, so now it's time for your U try. So, same thing, I want you to find the intervals where it is increasing and decreasing for our function f of x. <clears throat> so go ahead and pause the video now and give this a shot and then I'll work it out when you're ready to come back. So same thing, we take our derivative, so this time we get f prime of x is equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. Setting our derivative equal to 0 and factoring, take out our GCF of 3, it gives us x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And this factors into x plus 1 squared equals 0. So we're going to get our only solution is x equals 2 negative. 1. So we put negative 1, and if we check each of these values, or something on the other side of negative 1 in our original function, we notice we can do it on our calculator, but an observation will save us a little bit of time. If you square something, so we have x plus 1 squared, well anything squared is always going to be positive or 0. So the smallest 3 times x plus 1 squared can ever be is 0. And we'll just verify that really quick. If I pick negative 2, I get 3. And if I pick, say, positive 2, I get 27. So on both sides I'm positive and positive. So that tells me that f is increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to negative 1 unioned with negative 1 to infinity. Alright, so the next theorem we want to talk about is called the first derivative test. So the first derivative test tells us how to find maximums and minimums of a function. So it says if c is a critical number of f and f is a continuous function and if f prime changes sign from positive to negative at x equals c, then f of c is a local maximum. Case 2, if f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals c, then f of c is a local minimum, 
And case three, if f prime does not change sign at x equals c, then f of c is neither a max nor a min. And we'll call that a saddle point, although it doesn't really look like a saddle in the two-dimensional case. So if we look back at the u try you guys just did, we would have that x equals negative one would be a saddle point of this function because our derivative did not change sign there. It was positive and still positive. All right, so let's go ahead and do example number two. Find the local maximum and minimum of f of x equals e to the x sine x on the interval zero to two pi. So we find our critical numbers by taking the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be, we have our f, we have our g, so g prime f, so we're gonna have e to the x cosine x plus f prime g, which is e to the x sine x. And then we set that equal to zero, so e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x is equal to zero. Factoring out our common factor of e to the x leaves behind cosine x plus sine x equals zero. And then by the zero product rule, we have e to the x equals zero or cosine x plus sine x is equal to zero. So e to the x equals zero has no solutions, and we can check that because if we take the logarithm of both sides, the logarithm of zero is undefined. So this is, has no solutions. And then over here to resolve this, we're going to minus sine from both sides, minus sine, and that gives cosine x equals negative sine x. And if we divide by negative cosine and divide by negative cosine, that gives negative one is equal to the tangent of x or in other words, using the inverse tangent, x is equal to the inverse tangent of negative one. And the inverse tangent of negative one is negative pi over four. We notice that the domain that we're interested in is zero to two pi. And negative pi over four isn't in zero to two pi. But we do know that the period of the tangent function is pi, and so we're going to get another solution at plus pi and plus another pi. So then we get three pi over four, and then our next one would be seven pi over four. If I add another multiple of pi, that would give me 11 pi over four, but that is bigger than two pi, so that one's not going to be in the domain. So now, let's take a look at where our graph is increasing and decreasing. So we put our critical numbers on our number line. And grab our graphing device and we put our derivative in. So we had e to the x times cosine x plus sine x. And if we go alpha trace, grab y1, and let's try pi divided by four for our first one, and press enter, and we get a positive, and then we try pi, negative, so this one's negative, and then finally something bigger than seven pi over four, so let's do two pi, get a positive. 
So, <clears throat> if we were to cat, sketch a quick graph, we know it looks something like this. So we're going to have a max here, and we're going to have a min here. So our max, 3 pi over 4, and our min at 7 pi over 4. All right, once again, as always, it's your turn to go ahead and do a U try. So find the local max and the local min. of this function. So we find f prime and get 6x squared plus 6x minus 0. And then we set this equal to 0 and we solve. So we factor out our GCF which is 6x and we get 6x times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So then <coughs> our two critical numbers are x equals 0 or x is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 and 0. So if we plug in something less than negative 1, we're going to have a negative times a negative, which makes it positive. Something between negative 1 and 0, we're going to have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Something bigger than zero is going to be a positive times a positive, so it's positive. And just like before, you could have just plugged it into your calculator. So this time it looks like we're going to have a max at negative one, and we're going to have a min at zero. Next thing we want to talk about is concavity. So here's our definition. If a graph <coughs> f of x is above all of its tangent lines on the interval a, b, then f is concave up on a, b. So that's like what we have here on the picture on the left. The red graph is above all of its tangent lines. If the graph of f of x is below all of its tangent lines on an interval a, b, then f of x is concave down on a, b. And in our picture here on the right, we see that this curve, the red curve, is below all of its tangent lines on that interval. So our theorem, the concavity test, says that if f double prime of x is greater than 0 for all x in AB, then the graph is concave up on AB. And if f double prime is less than 0 for all x on AB, then the graph is concave down on AB. A point P is called an inflection point if the following two things are true f is continuous at p and f changes concavity at p. That is, f double prime changes sign at p and f double prime at p is equal to zero. So let's take a look at example number three. Find the inflection point or points and intervals where f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared is concave up and concave down. So to find the inflection points, we need to find the second derivative. So first derivative, not in blue. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x Taking one more derivative, f double prime is equal to 6x take away 4. Then we set the second derivative equal to 0, and we get 6x minus 4 is equal to 0. We add 4, 
we add 4, and we get 6x is equal to 4. Divide by 6, divide by 6, and we get x is equal to 2 thirds. So now we put this on our number line, similar to what we were doing with the critical numbers, and we need to test something bigger than 2 thirds and something smaller than 2 thirds. Well, if I plug something smaller than 2 thirds, say 0 into f double prime, 0 take away 4 is negative 4, so it's negative. If I plug in 1, 1 times 6 is 6, and 6 minus 4 is 2, so that's going to be positive. So we get that x equals 2 thirds is an inflection point. And to find the inflection point, we put 2 thirds back in to the original function. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have x cubed minus 2x squared. <coughs> we put in our 2 thirds enter and we get negative 16 over 27 so then the inflection point is two-thirds and negative 16 27 all right so let's go back and look at our definition of concavity again. So when we look at this, we see that a graph, if it is above all of its tangent lines, it is concave up. Well, that graph in the left in red has a minimum value <coughs> at the zero of its first derivative, or at the critical number where it's tangent line is horizontal. Well that picture suggests the following theorem which is the second derivative test. If f double prime is continuous on an interval x equals c where c is a critical number of f and if f double prime of c is bigger than zero, then the graph has a local minimum. If f double prime of c is less than zero, f has a local maximum. And if it equals zero, or if f double prime of c equals zero, then the second derivative test fails and gives us new no new information, and we have to use a different test. All right, so let's go ahead and have you guys use the second derivative test to do this next, you try. All right, so first thing we need to do is find the critical numbers. So f prime of x is gonna be three x squared minus three x. And if we set that equal to zero, and factor, we factor out our three, we get x squared minus one equals zero. And we factor the difference of squares. That gives us x equals one or x equals two negative one. <coughs> so those are our critical numbers. We take one more derivative, f double prime of x is six x. So then, our graph changes concavity only when x equals zero. So if we test f double prime of one is equal to six times one equals six, so our graph is going to be concave up.
So that means in a picture, our graph is concave up. It looks something like this. So it's going to have a min at that point. So to find the actual minimum value, we have to put 1 back into the original. So f of 1 is 1 cubed minus 3 times 1, which is 1 minus 3, which equals negative 2. And similarly, we check the other critical number in f double prime. So f double prime of negative 1 is 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6, which is less than 0. So the graph is concave down. And that means that it looks something like this. So our graph is going to have a maximum at that point. And we put negative 1 back into the original. So we negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1. So that's negative 1 plus 3 is going to equal to positive 2. So then our max is going to be at the input negative 1 and 2. I didn't explicitly write the point up here, so let's go back and fill that in. And it's going to be at 1 comma negative 2. So to find the actual points on the graph, remember we have to put the critical number back into the original function f. Well, let's go ahead and graph this really quick and see if we are accurate. So we have x cubed take away 3x and when we graph it Indeed, we see that we have both a max and a min in the spots that we just found using calculus.